material by analyzing the mind-body problem using a baseball model of dead and living thinkers. So I'm ending here with, with Jimi Hendrix, whose rendition of the Star Spangled Banner at Woodstock was before about 30,000 people at the last day. He was the closer. He opted to be the closer. And it was an powerful emotional experience because with his guitar, Jimmy imitated the sounds of bombs descending, descending. And everybody was pretty much overwhelmed by that. But the key question here is, what is the meaning of existence? What is our destiny? And our destiny may simply be to gain knowledge so we know how to evolve at a death transition. And this knowledge may be why the grateful dead are grateful. Possibly. <laughs> OK, any questions on that? Judy. Yes. Do any of the, uh, does any of this lend credence to religions or cultures that believe in reincarnation? I think so, because what does occur, if you don't have the knowledge, um, the pathway that they describe, and it involves the sun, it involves the axis of a black hole, the rainbow, you only see the rainbow gravity at the axis of a black hole. And obviously, Woodstock people and others through um, psychoactive drugs could see all this. So reincarnation, it's possible, and I have not explored this heavy date, but reincarnation does explain that people come back and they travel around again. But what these ancient societies are saying is that if you don't know the route, if you don't have the, the knowledge, then what happens is your DNA, instead of being energized, your DNA becomes degraded and disassembled, and they call it the second death. Egypt calls it the second death. Right. Early Chinese um, emperors call it your DNA going down the central drain spout, like a sink and bye-bye DNA. And um, the Navajo call it the, the snake that, that crushes you to death. 